Part 2. Practical Matters. Let's begin with packing. Now, a lot of people think that all of Nepal looks like the summit of Mount Everest, but it really doesn't. Her farm is located at just 3,000 feet in elevation. Summers are hot and humid, and it frequently rains. Winters are cool, but not freezing. Temperatures at night and winter can get to the mid-30s Fahrenheit, and daytime temps in the 60s. You may have a long walk uphill to reach the farm, so don't overpack. You can always leave some things at our house in Budunokanta, for instance, if you plan to go trekking later or do some other touring around the country. The things that you don't really need at her farm, leave there at the house. They'll be perfectly safe. Uh, just bring the things to the farm that you really need. Do not use a suitcase with roller wheels. There's just really no place in Nepal to use a roller wheel suitcase. We do laundry by hand in wash tubs at the farm, and then we dry clothes on lines. So things like jeans or other heavy fabrics that can take a very, very long time to dry may not be things you want to pack. We use large solar systems to get hot water. And obviously, if there isn't any sun, there's going to be very little hot water. So keep your showers really short on overcast days. But luckily, it's sunny most days. Bring along some shower clothing, for lack of a better word. Something to wear when you're coming and going from your room to the showers. Walking through the house in a bath towel is kind of frowned upon by the locals. You're going to most likely experience some degree of culture shock. You know, Nepal is a rich tapestry of cultures, religions, languages, and yes, there's an active caste system. You're going to be meeting and living with people who dress differently than you, speak a language that you don't understand, and have ways of doing things that, at first, will seem strange. Take it in, enjoy what it is, ask questions. Learn from the women of her farm all you can about the culture. They're happy to teach you. You're considered a respected guest in the home. The culture there demands that they treat you as an honored guest. And it may be difficult at times for them to include you in things, like helping in the kitchen, for example. But be patient and keep trying. It's just not in their nature to allow an honored guest to participate in some things. But endeavor to persevere You'll soon find your way into the inner circle and be accepted, and you'll be involved and doing everything with the girls all the time. Remember, though, respect is the bedrock of the culture. That's one of the reasons why Nepalis will always give you namaste when you're coming and namaste when you're leaving. Relationships in Nepal are really, really important. And the women spend a lot of time talking with each other and socializing. Because in Nepal, there's nothing you can have that's more valuable than your social circles, your social network, your friends, your family. It's what you need to get anything accomplished in that country. So relationships are, are the most important thing. You become part of that circle for the women of her farm. Become one of their friends, enter that circle of relationships, and everything's going to just be great. Sandals, flip-flops, or whatever you like to call them, are really necessary. Uh, in Nepal, people don't wear shoes in the home. Uh, they wear flip-flops. And if you don't have some, you can always buy a pair in Mata Basie, which is near the farm, and they sell them there for very, very little money. Show up for your meals on time. Uh, Nepali people believe that food should be eaten as soon as it's served in order to be tasty. They work hard to cook for you and show your respect by being on time for meals. Please do not bring candy for the children. Please do not bring candy for the children. Maybe I should do that one more time. Please do not bring candy for the children. Pencils, children's books that don't have scary monsters, are appreciated, but not candy. SIM cards are available at the airport from either NTC, Nepal Telecommunications Corporation, or NCEL. And, and either one is, is the same as the other. It doesn't really matter. They've got 3G service available nearly everywhere in the country. But you're going to need a couple of passport photos and a photocopy of your passport if you plan to get one. Data and voice plans are all prepaid, but you can get recharge cards from many, many shops, even the tiny shop in the village near her farm. We do have Wi-Fi at the farm, and it works most of the time. It's a little slow, but you can email, you can post to social media, and sometimes you can even make Skype calls home. You know, there's lots of guidebooks out there on how to go trekking in Nepal or various temples in Nepal religious holidays and customs and so forth and so on. But a couple of books that I want to suggest to you that I think uh, would give you some insight into how things work in Nepal, the nature of family, the nature of relationships, are Buddha's Orphans and The Tutor of History. And these are both fictional books, 
But woven into the fiction is a lot of really good insight into how things work in Nepal. And it'll give you something to read on the long flight over on the airplane. Please ask, ask again, and ask some more. Ask us any and all questions. Nothing's a silly question. Chances are somebody else has the same question, so speak up. That's what we're here for. The views are great from her farm. The people are even greater. You're going to have a wonderful time. And thank you so much for choosing us.